Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. Today we're gonna to take a deeper look at the upcoming geometry nodes. Let's get started. Okay, so what I wanted to do was show you uh, something new that I figured out you could do with geometry nodes. Again, this is in Blender 2.93 Alpha, so the latest alpha build in the experimental download section. So what we need to do is head over to blender.org and go to download and then scroll down to the dangerous red section. And then uh, you just want to download right here, Blender 2.93 Alpha. Now it is an alpha build, so it's unstable. Things will crash. It's crashed on me like four or five times just figuring this out. Now this will be eventually coming out into the mainstream mainline release of Blender. I think they're scheduled to do that the second half of 2021. So what are we going to do? We're going to recreate a motion graphic effect that you can do in Cinema 4D. So first thing I want to do is go ahead and get set up. And we're going to do the default kind of setup right now for geometry nodes like everybody else is doing. And then I'll show you kind of how we can expand it a little bit. I'm going to go uh, Shift A and I'm going to create a grid. I'm going to scale it out. Again, a grid's the same as a plane. It's just subdivided. So I've got my grid. There's the mesh. That's why it's called a grid. Nothing else to it. It's just a piece of mesh. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to open up my geometry node editor. Okay, so first thing we do is we click new once we got the geometry nodes window open and come down here, it gives us the standard group input, group output, uh, no magic yet. And we're gonna get a, uh, get our points set up. Now remember with geometry nodes, the way it works, you have to think about it in a different way. Get a, it's At first you create points along a surface and then after you affect those points, like change the scale, change their rotation, do all kinds of cool effects to them, then you want to instance something in the location of all those points because the points don't render. They're nothing. They're just data points. They're just locations in space with rotation data, scale data, and uh, position data, right? So then we want to say, okay, I want to use this mesh to instance where all these points are. So don't get too confused. And the geometry input and output is basically just what's the piece of geometry that this node system is going to live on. So we want it to live on the plane. It uses the surface of the plane to do this stuff. So if you had a sphere, it would be along the surface of the sphere. So anyways, let's uh, let's go and do that. First thing we want to do is pretty much always going to grab first a uh, point distribute node. That's always more or less the first node when you're getting set up. You can see we've instantly lost the mesh and it's turned into these points. We can increase the density. So you can see they're filling the space of our plane. And uh, the next thing we want to do is grab a point instance node. This is typically the last node. Not always, but typically. And we're gonna for the object, we're gonna select the cube, right? And now what it's gonna do is it's gonna make the cube be the the object, the geometry that's positioned wherever these instanced points are. Um, now it's really massive, so I'm just gonna go into my cube, hit tab to enter edit mode, and just scale within edit mode, and that'll just kind of bring it down. We could do this within geometry nodes as well, but just for simple simplification of our node setup, I'll just do it like that. So you can just focus on what we want to focus on. What we want to do now is we want to use the new um, uh, texture sample node that uh, they just started talking about. So this has just been released. So we're going to go up here to attribute and we're going to grab the sample texture attribute node. This node can look at a texture and take information from that texture and use it to drive an attribute in your system, okay? So a lot of terms thrown around there, but I'll show you. So I'm gonna grab these, throw it out. You may have seen this if you watched some, a few videos already on, uh, on the internet, but what I'm gonna show you is new. So once we get through this initial setup. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and drop this in here. Nothing's gonna happen because we're not telling it to do anything yet. And uh, we need to input something for mapping and result. So the result is simple. That's easy to understand. That's what is it we want to affect? What attribute? Now remember this little light blue circle, this always stands for attribute. And an attribute is something that lives within the, the, the individual points uh, that we've distributed across our geometry. So an attribute would be the scale attribute or the rotation attribute or the position attribute. Um, there are all these different things that you can use as attributes. Now, the key is you have to spell it correctly and you have to type it correctly. So lowercase and uppercase matters as well. So it won't work if you type it wrong. Um, so this is a little, this will probably get easier as we go forward. This will be a little more user friendly, but right now it's very specific. Anyways, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be affecting the scale of all these cubes with a texture that we're gonna create. So I'm gonna type in scale, it has to be lowercase, okay? So now the result will be inputted into the scale of each of these little points that we put in, all right? Don't get confused into thinking that it's affecting the cube. The cube is just off somewhere. Where is the cube actually? Oh, it's right, it's really tiny. There's the cube. Ta-da. So nothing, we're not doing anything to that cube. 
It's just sitting over there as a reference that it uses when it instances everything at the very end of this chain. Uh, I'm going to create a new texture um, and it gives it a name here. I'm going to call this uh, my, I don't know, what do I want to call this? Um, scale uh, change. And I'm going to come over to the texture tab and I will pull up, and you can see it's here now. If I bring the drop down menu, you can see we've got scale changes now, a texture that's been created. So I can grab it. And then what I can do is I can, uh, and also, by the way, it doesn't matter where it lives, this texture. So you can only access textures if you have an object selected. Uh, but I could be affecting this texture on another object like the cube or something else. And um, it just allows me to change the values of the texture. Uh, you can, as long as it's named and it exists somewhere, this works. Okay, so anyways, I'm going to switch this from image to blend, and that's going to use a gradient. And I'm going to switch this over to, well, actually, I'll just keep it like this. So you can see it at first. Now, the next thing you need to know is the mapping. So what's the mapping? Because you see, it's not doing anything to the scale of these cubes yet. Mapping is asking, how, how do I need to, how do I map this gradient across the surface of the grid? And what we want to use is the UV map for this. So um, it could be named anything, but in most cases, the default is just called UV map. So you can just come over here, copy the name of UV map and paste it just like so. Now you can see suddenly uh, this texture is affecting the scale. So the result is going into the scale of these cubes. And I can change those values in the settings here, you know, so I can like change the contrast and that's going to see it, it changes there in the view and that's animatable, right? But we're going to, we're going to take this even further. Next thing I want to do is I'm going to switch this to spherical. Now it disappears. The reason for that is if you see this spherical texture is kind of off to the side, it's actually the same here. It's off to the side and it's like off the size of the, the grid. And so that's why we're not seeing anything. Um, that can be a little confusing at first. That had me fooled for a little bit. I'm going to create another object in my scene. In fact, let's just, I'm going to keep this at the linear just for now so we can still see it. So we know that we know what's happening. Everything changes to it. I'm going to go shift A. I'm going to create an empty and I'll create a plane access into I'll scale it up just so I can see it. See it. Scale doesn't really matter for how we're going to be using it. Um, and I will come back over to my geometry notes. Okay. So I've created my, my empty. Now I want to come over to here and I'm going to grab, uh, Go input object info, and I'm going to grab that empty. All right. In fact, I'm going to call this thing my scale, call it my scale effector, because we're trying to emulate MoGraph and Motion Graph, and everything's called effectors over in C40. Anyways, scale effector. There it is. Now, I want to take the location of this null, this scale effector, and I want it to affect the scale of things, right? So how do we do that with this new setup? Well, this, this texture node is really making it possible because now if we do anything to the attribute, the UV, the UV map attribute in this object, it's going to be updating the way it maps this texture, this gradient, circular gradient texture. So I'm going to make a little bit of room here and I'm going to grab an attribute vector math node. This is another one that's new. What I want to do is I'm going to add the location of this empty to the UV of that lives on this object. So I want to take the attribute, the UV attribute on this grid object. So I'm going to type in UV map. Again, make sure you're spelling right. It's UV and M are all capitals. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to put, pipe it in the result because I want to take the UV map as it is. I'm going to add some vector of numbers to it. So change its location, right? To move it around in 3D space. And I want that new result to then be saved in the UV map again, right? So it takes the old UV map value, adds something to it, and then replaces it. So that when we come over here and we're using UV map, we've changed its value. And so it updates over here. Does that make sense? I hope you're, hope you're sticking with me. All right. So now type B attribute, I don't want to attribute. I want to, this allows me to drop down and, and select a vector. So I want to use a vector. So I'm going to grab the location vector and I'll drop that in here. Okay, now nothing happens yet. But if I move this around, you can see we're starting to get a result as we move this null. All right. Now this might be as far as you want to go, right? But we can do so much more. All right. Now if I switch this to relative, it's going to be relative to the actual position of these guys. It just behaves a bit more like you would expect it. Another thing I've noticed if you switch to subtract, you actually get a result that's more one to one with where your null is positioned. So you can see now wherever this null is, it helps bring it on. 
All right, so this is, this is pretty cool, eh? So now, what we can do with this is uh, we can go even further and a couple of things that are really nice. We can switch on the color ramp for this texture. So this is the texture view again, scale change texture. And the color ramp allows you to create a ramp of colors that it will apply in this, so in, in our instance, uh, a linear, in a linear fashion. So what you can do now is you can take like the white value, which is the bit that's large. You can actually, you can change these, right? You change the position to crunch it down, but you can also come in here to the white and you can change the values in R, G, and B and they represent X, Y, and Z, right? So let's say I wanted it to be really tall. I could make this one 10, right? And now you can see that what's happening is they're not scaling, you know, evenly. They're actually scaling up really high on the Z based on where this null is positioned, which is pretty cool. So you can go in there and you can set any number in this and, uh, and really just go to town with how you want this to be shaped. I'm going to switch this from a linear ramp. Um, let's see, I need to go back to, I'll set this back to, I'll just do all, I'll just do ones on these just to simplify it. One, one, and one. There we go. Now let's switch this to spherical. Now with spherical, uh, the, you have to remember this is a, it generates a sphere gradient in 3D space. So you can see if I'm moving this, this null now up and down, they reappear and reappear. You kind of picture it like slicing through uh, a sphere. If I duplicate this and like grab it up, you can see I kind of get this like, you can sort of see the sphere. So bear that in mind. If you can't see it, you might have to go up a little bit. Now I can add some other like points to this, this gradient now, right? So let me add another point. I'll pop this here and I'll make this one, let's say white. And then I'll add another point. Bring it here and make this one black. And now you're getting like these, starting to see where, where this can get exciting because you're getting like very different uh, patterns. I come over here, let's, let's now take this up and let's make this, uh, let's, let's make this, I'll go to vibrancy and make it three just so they get a bit bigger when they come to the end here. Make my grid maybe a bit bigger. So you could really start making some really, really cool stuff. Now imagine like if you were driving this null with some music, for example, you know, and you put like some random ambient motion on this thing, you can see how it would start to get really, really interesting. Now let's, let's take this up even further. So let's take this now and let's say we want two different textures with different attributes, different like colors and stuff affecting scale in a different way. Uh, or maybe we want to affect the rotation, right? What we can do is we can come here and we can duplicate this. So we duplicate the, the attribute sample texture. I could take geometry, pipe it in here. And then I can click this little button to create a new texture. Let's call this one uh, scale uh, two, scale change two. And then maybe one more, we'll call this one, uh, I'll click the new texture button. We'll call this one rotation change and grab geometry as well. So all of these now are being affected by um, this attribute math, so the, the position of our null. And now we got all these different types. So what we can do now is we can take this and duplicate it. So we're instancing even more versions of this thing. And then we can come over here and type in join. And we can join this one. Let's, let's not, we'll do, what we'll, we'll do is we won't, Make this one instance. We'll take this, and we'll uh, we'll have one that affects the rotation. We'll do that later. Do the rotation in a minute. We'll just do the two for for now. All right. So scale change two. If I come over here, I can now switch to scale change two. And again, I can say let's use blend, and I can use anything. I could say let's go back to spherical. Why not? And this time, let's say I want it to like scale up on you know the Z uh, really high. I can turn on my color ramp. Come over here to my white color. And let's take the blue and make it uh, 50, right? Or maybe 20, that's probably all we need. And now it's quite even across the whole thing. So let me actually crunch it down. So this only happens to the ones that are kind of right in the center, right? Now I can grab my scale effector. And you can see we're getting some really, really cool stuff. All right, this is gonna look even wilder if we go Shift A, UV Sphere, scale the sphere up. And let's take this and I'll just click 
new. I'd click new because you can't actually switch. I think it's a bug. You can't actually just switch to it if you don't already have Jammer Chinos on it. Anyway, so now this has the same system. You can even call this our uh, uh, scale or our effector system, just so it's clear that it's the same. And now if I grab this, there it is. Check this out. Go back here, let's add more density. Pretty rad, eh? Very, very cool stuff. And let's uh, let's affect the rotation of these these cubes as well, but maybe not the the ones that, that zoom out like that. Let's uh, let's see what can we do. Let's, uh, so that means I'm going to leave this group alone. So this is our scale change two, which scales them out, uh, scales this separate group out. Now remember, this isn't like scaling the same cube twice. This is actually a totally different instance of the cube. It's, it's a whole new group of cubes, and you can see they're intersecting there because they're they're in the same position because we're using the same point distribute, right? So it's creating a new system of cubes with this density in the same place, right? Does that make sense? Not the same, uh, it's not just taking these cubes and scaling them up. Anyway, so let's take, uh, let's move this down the chain a little bit. I'm gonna take this and duplicate it. And this time I'm gonna create a new texture. I'm gonna call this uh, rotation change. You can see everything disappeared, right? Because it's the results being mapped to scale, but I wanna change that to rotation. So. Switch to rotation, see the scale goes back, right? Because now we're affecting the scale and then this time we're affecting the rotation. So I'll come here and I'll grab uh, my new one. So rotation change is the one that we want. And I'll sit, switch this to blend and I will go spherical as well. And uh, now this one, I'm gonna, I want this to be a little different. So I'm gonna come over here. I might flip it, you know? So you can see things are starting to rotate. But let's say I want to rotate them a lot. So I'll come back over here. Vibrancy, I might go five. And now if I'm moving this around, you can see that the cubes are rotating. Also affects it differently based on the size of the actual object that you're instancing on. So I can do that as well. Anyway, so geometry nodes coming at you. Blender 2.93. It's very, very exciting stuff. Um, you could just imagine how far you can push this and what kind of things you would do. You know, this is this is great for some really neat motion design effects. All right, so as you can see, you can use these tools to create some pretty amazing stuff. We just put a bit of time and effort into it. Now, if you want to check out what I've done here to make this uh, text animation, uh, it's all in the live stream that I did, which I put up on Patreon, or you can get access to it if you become a channel member here on YouTube at the All Access Pass level and higher. So check those out if you want to see how I made this and get a lot more in-depth look at me playing with this. It's about a two-hour stream, so a lot of cool things happen. But um, anyways, I hope this gets you really excited about what's put, what's coming uh, down the track with Blender and uh, what's going to be you know possible in the future. It's really exciting. Some neat stuff happening. So I hope you found this really helpful and enjoy playing with geometry nodes in Blender 2.93. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next tutorial. I'll see you later. Adios.